Okay guys, so here is our little flu station. Um, this is what a flu swab will actually look like for the most part. Um, this is for any type of virus. This is a viral swab. So this is what's called a flock swab. It's like a spiky little Q-tip basically. <laughs> And that's what goes up your nose and back to the back of your throat, pretty much. And the better um, a nurse or whoever's collecting it jams it up there, the more likely they are going to detect the virus if the flu virus is there. And then once the swab is swabbed, it will go inside this container. Okay, so the testing that we do is by Quidel. And it's called the Sophia. Um, here's what the cartridge looks like. And actually, so some of the other processes, you could see the line and it would actually read it. But with these, um, no visible lines to the human eye are there. And it actually detects it by a higher um, scientific process, I guess you'd say. So, um, I have a survey that I have to do anyway, so I will show you guys how to do it with that. But, a little setup here is like the reagent, um, and one of these, you twist off the cap and add it to there, and then we would use this to vortex it, we would just hold it down, and that just shakes it up. Um, and then we would take one of these pink guys and suck up the um the viral media here once we usually vortex that too to get anything that's on this squab really mixed up well into the media um and then we would pipette it up we would press this little bulbous area and pipette it up to the top and the overflow goes into the second little overflow bulb um and then once we We'll put that amount into here that already has this in it um, and then we'll vortex that again and then we will use this little pipette and suck that up and dispense that into the cartridge slot and then on here this is an old one oh so we can see what it looks like see you can't tell any of the lines it's all read differently than that um, but it reads this little uh, basically QR code that's where it's dispensed and um, so once a cartridge has been used once it cannot be used again so if you accidentally have it on a wrong mode so right now it's on walk away mode that means you set it up and come back in about 15 minutes and it's done um, there's a read now mode if you have a bunch of tests to run that um, then you can set them up usually I try to put covering over them um, so that the uh, media doesn't evaporate too fast before it decides to migrate down um, but if you have a bunch of them you can set them up and then once it's been the 15 minutes um, then you can put them in and it only takes like a minute to read them but right now it's on walk away mode so I would put in my user ID and then put in the patient ID and there here's the little um, barcode scanner you can just scan it straight off the patient label um, and then you would put in the order number too and then you press start test put the cartridge in here and then we'll have a little counting down and it has a very very um, not very loud um, timer that goes off like a little beep but it's kind of hard to hear so you kind of want to set your own timer to know when to come check it again so I'm going to get my um, survey specimen and I'll show you guys how I actually do one Okay guys, so now I have my survey specimen. Um, it looks a little bit different. It's in a different container, but first I'm going to vortex it in our little vortexer. That's what that noise is. Okay, so here we have our little reagent. Here's our diluent. So I'm going to twist that cap off. And we're going to squish that in there. Okay, now we're going to vortex this mixture. There's that. And then we're going to take 
our pink pipette to add our viral sample. And then we'll squish the bulb and have that go up all the way. And then there's a little bit of overflow if you guys can see that. Okay. Then that will get put into that little vial. We'll throw that pipette away. Recap our specimen. And then this gets vortexed again. Okay, now that it's all shook up, we have our reagent cartridge. We'll open that up. Here's what it looks like. Unique little um, barcode that's on all of them. Then we will take our clear pipette and we will pipette from our mixture into our cartridge. Okay. Now that that's done, I'm going to put in my user ID, the patient ID, and the order number, which since it's a survey, I'll just put it in the number there. Let's see. Okay, so I'll press start test, and here's what the screen looks like. It says walk away mode selected. Please insert cassette and close drawer. So here's our cassette. As you can see, it's already starting to migrate. We do want it on walk away mode since we don't have a bunch to do right now. Says, please wait. So, it says test in progress. Sophia flu A and B. That's what we're testing for. Patient ID is number five because I'm testing our fifth specimen and test development. So, it has um, about 15 minutes and 30 seconds left. When it gets to about this line right there, that's where it says scan, that's when it starts actually reading the result. Now, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the flu test. So, here lately, this past week, we have not been getting a lot of positives um, from our screening test. That's the test I just showed you. Now, there is another um, way to test. It's by PCR. That is the gold standard. That is the... Um, best way to test for the flu, but this is a lot quicker. We can get it in 15 minutes. Um, we do not have a PCR machine at our hospital, so everything gets sent to our sister hospital, our bigger hospital that has a bigger, larger um, microbiology slash virology department um, where the PCR test is run. Um, and so all of our inpatients that have respiratory symptoms do get that PCR test um, because this this kit, you know, it's not 100%. Some can get missed, but I have found it to be pretty accurate. Um, most of the tests that are negative on here are still negative when they're done by PCR. And if they're positive, we really don't need to check. It's There are very rare false positives sometimes, um, but usually if there is another viral acting agent, it will cause um, a positive for flu A and B and that's your indicator that something is wrong um, if it's it'll say it's an invalid test um, if it's trying to just say it's positive for A and B not that you can't I guess technically have both A and B would be a very bad time um, but usually that means that you know there maybe you have like norovirus or rotavirus or another one of those viruses that's kind of a pan agglutinin and just kind of um, makes lines a lot of lines i've seen some on uh the old readers where there was just like there was like a control line there was a line at a there was a line at b there was like another line and then that's an invalid test so um because this reader you don't see the lines 
um, it internally reads it and knows, hey, like this test isn't good. Um, but back in the day when we ran the other way, um, if there was an A and a B, then we would um, send it to get done by PCR to figure out exactly what the virus is. Um, because it's probably not the flu. If it is, it's, you know, messy whatever antigens or maybe it's just the person's genetics um, is messing with the test and making it look like they have everything, <laughs> which would be bad. Um, but anyway, after my flu um, survey gets done, I'll show you guys what the results kind of look like. Um, it will print out on the, the paper and usually, you know, we confirm that that's the right patient and then we label it with one of our label stickers um, because this is a survey. We don't really have that. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, please comment down below and let me know and I will try to answer them. Um, like I said, you know, this is just a screen, it's not 100%, um, but the numbers are pretty good with um, detecting it, especially pretty rapidly. So, uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll put in the results here. Okay, and here you can see the results. It was negative, it was on walkaway mode, and it was number five that was run. And then it has the lot number, um, the cassette um, serial number, and that the control was valid. And then when it's done, it pops out here, and then you can discard the cartridge. Thanks for watching, see you guys later, bye.